So guys, it's July and it's nearing admissions test season. Oh my God. And many of you guys on this channel will be wanting to apply to medical school, meaning you're gonna have to do one of the two admissions tests, the BMAP and the UCAT. And guys, it's hard, but stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna be exploring the UCAT. I'm gonna be talking about what exactly is the UCAT, what they're looking for, and how do you prepare for it in order to optimize your scores to be competitive in your medical school application. to my channel. My name is Fran, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm a first year medic. Actually, I've just completed my first year, crazy. I've just completed my first year at the University of Oxford for medicine. I sat my UK cat, as it was called in the time, in 2018, and I actually scored within the top 12th percentile, allowing me to make a competitive application to medical schools, including University of Edinburgh and also King's College London. The UCAT is an incredibly difficult exam, assessing your critical skills, your aptitude to medicine, and your general cognitive skills. However, I have created this video to kind of give you the guidance that I wish I had when I was preparing for my UCAT and to kind of make this journey a little bit easier for you. This video will be sponsored by Medify, which is an incredible online resource for people who want to prepare for their UCAT. It's home to 10,000 practice questions, eight full mocks available to you guys, and 18 mini mocks for you guys to also do. I was practicing about two hours daily not to my UCAT and I never ran out of questions or saw the same one twice. And also it has inbuilt tools which allow you to analyze your progress and compare your progress to to the other students using Medify. And guys, if you stay to the end of the video, I'll be giving information about how I'm giving away one free season pass for Medify to one of you guys, one of my subscribers. So watch this video to the end if you want a free Medify pass. Anyways, without further ado, let's start with the video. <laughs> Question number one. What exactly is the UCAT? Now the UCAT stands for the University Clinical Aptitude Test and as it says, it's assessing your aptitude and suitability to medicine and it is a tool used by a lot of UK med schools. You guys may be familiar with the term UK CAT and that was the old name that the UCAT was under. The UCAT and UK CAT are exactly the same. They've just had a name change. So that means the timing, the content, the structuring, everything is the exact same. You'll be assessed using five sections four of them are cognitive and one of them is non-cognitive and that is the SJT and I will be going through all of this in this video so just stay tuned. Question number two, what universities actually require the UCAT? As of 2020 I believe that 26 universities actually require the UCAT. I'm going to put in the description bar below the 26 universities that require it. Question, when shall I sit my UCAT? Well, obviously 2020 is a little bit different compared to other years because Miss Rona, Miss COVID-19 had to come and do her shenanigans. So in 2020, you'll be allowed to sit the UCAT from home using a proctorial service or from a test center if it is open. Bookings open from the 1st of July and the first tests will actually be sat from the 3rd of July till the 1st of October, if I'm correct. Now, I and UCAT actually recommend that you sit the test as early as possible. My reason is because the earlier you can get it out the way, the, the more time you have in your summer to concentrate on other things like your personal statement or even, you know, resting, maybe. You can't recommend you sitting it early because it is still subject to change. Obviously, the situation with COVID-19 is very volatile and things are changing all the time. So if you can sit it early on and secure your mark early on, better guarantee and certainty for you. So if you do book your exam, but it's three days before the exam and you're feeling gross unprepared don't worry there is the chance to rebook so let's actually go over the content of the UCAT now the first section is verbal reasoning and this is famously known as the reading section because there is a lot of reading to do and for me this was my weakest subject because I'm not the strongest reader I also have dyslexia which kind of yeah it doesn't really help however if anyone has told you that you cannot improve your score 
they're lying. So in verbal reasoning, you'll be given 11 passages which will have four associated questions, given a grand total of 44 questions, and you'll have 21 minutes to do them under standard times, meaning that the verbal reasoning section is one of the most time intense sections. In the questions, you'll be given statements about the text that you've just read, and you'll be asked whether they're true, false, or you can't tell. Or you'll be given free text, so these can include questions or statements, and you'll be asked to select the answer which is most applicable. So the purpose of this section is to analyze your ability to comprehend and critically draw conclusions from large pieces of text which will be really relevant in your journey to becoming a doctor. Now let's talk about advice for the VR. How do you prepare for verbal reasoning? Although this is often known as the English section you still require a degree of logical and rational thinking for you to deduce the correct answer. So one thing I can say is honestly practice practice practice. There are small things that can easily catch you out that if you haven't been exposed to those sort of questions you won't be familiar with when you're actually faced with doing your exam. Verbal reasoning is the most time pressured section but one thing I can say is practice doing the questions under time condition. It's all well and good doing the questions and getting them correct but if you've spent 10 minutes on one question when in reality you'd be given under two minutes to answer a question then in the real thing you're not going to perform as well as you do in practice. An amazing feature about the online Medify resource is that you can actually do questions timed. Also you have approximately 2 minutes 30 per set of questions so you need to use your time wisely. So practice skim reading and I will say you guys need to practice reading, reading, reading. Reading articles, scientific articles, random articles, non-fiction articles. Sources I can recommend for these articles include PubMed which is more scientific and Wikipedia for anything else. <music> Now the next section is decision making and I definitely like decision making a lot more than verbal reasoning and this assesses your ability to reason and make logical deductions from the limited information they give to you. One thing I can say about the section is that they will deliberately give you confusing information to catch you out so again preparation is key for this. Practice these sort of questions so that you know what kind of things they will throw at you. So why is this section assessed? As a medical professional you'll be required to make quick and well thought out decisions in a highly pressurized environment. You will have 29 questions assessed in 31 minutes, so it's less time pressured than the verbal reasoning section. Now, my tips at how you can obtain a really good score in your decision making is number one, know the type of questions that they will throw at you. Having looked through the decision making questions, I've came to six categories of questions that you can be asked. Number one, logical puzzle questions. Number two, interpreting information questions. Number three, syllogisms. I can't really pronounce it. Syllogisms? I can't. <laughs> Number four, recognizing assumptions. Number five, Venn diagram questions. And number six, probably, oh my gosh probabilistic reasoning questions. <laughs> That's it. So now you know the six type of questions that you could be asked in your decision making sections. Now it's your job to practice, practice, practice these questions. And one thing I can recommend is again, Medify, a beautiful online tool. And guys, I keep emphasizing on this because honestly, it's unparalleled. I think as opposed to like other resources such as the book, having like an online resource that resembles the interface of the exam you're going to be sitting itself is so important because that's already preparing you for like exam conditions. Um, but anyways, yeah, prepare decision making using the Medify questions. Another good feature is that Medify actually separates out the different types of decision making questions and kind of logs and tracks your progress for each of these subtypes, allowing you to focus your time on the areas of decision making that your weakest app. In decision making you will also be required to evaluate arguments and this can come in the form of questions that I've previously talked about and for this I recommend using BMAT section 1 because guys you guys know on this channel that BMAT, mean BMAT, we're not really the bestest of friends because BMAT is essentially the UK cat or the UCAT on steroids. It is incredibly challenging and one thing I can say is that if you can master BMAT styled questions you definitely can do UCAT questions. <laughs> So the next section is quantitative reasoning and this is famously known 
has the maths section. There is a lot of numerical handling. This was the one that I scored the greatest in. I actually got 800 on this section, which I'm like super, super proud of. Now this section evaluates your ability to critically evaluate numbers presented in the form of graphs or tables and to quickly make decisions and conclusions based off them. Like verbal reasoning, this is a highly time pressured section. You have 24 minutes to do 36 questions and an on-screen calculator will be available for you to use. Now, why is this assessed? Like, why do doctors need to do this? Surely you can use calculators. What? No, this section is important because as medical professionals, whether that be dentists or doctors, we will be faced with a lot of data handling when we're doing drug calculations or even in clinical research. Now, my advice for the section is to focus on your mental maths when you're preparing. Honestly, although there is a calculator available on screen, just being able to do simple calculations, divisions, converting between probabilities and decimal places is so much quicker and it saves you seconds, which could be the difference between scoring an 800 or scoring a 900. I mean, I didn't really score, but anyways. Similarly, the next tip is to practice using the online calculator. A misconception that a lot of students have is that this online calculator is the same as a typical calculator that you'll be using for GCSE A-level maths. And it honestly isn't. It's like one of those really old ones. Master the shortcuts. So for me, when I was preparing for the UCAT, I had a really fat HP laptop that now belongs to my sisters. As an extension of the normal keypad, it had a number keypad, which made using the calculator a lot easier because I was literally just typing in the numbers. It had the plus, minus, divide, everything on there, number lock. And I believe this is what saved me the seconds that made the difference, allowing me to get such a competitive and high score. An important tip is to make educated guesses. Sometimes you just can't calculate the answer, but fortunately enough, you can look at the magnitude of the answer. You can look at the units of the answer and just make common sense, educated guesses to kind of eliminate or figure out whether that answer makes sense for the context that it's being applied for. Additionally, make sure that you read the questions carefully. There's sometimes extra information that students often miss out, which is critical to you kind of figuring out the correct answer. And also units, units are so important. You can do all the working out in the world, have the correct answer in your head, but you've clicked the wrong answer that has the wrong units and you miss out on that mark. <laughs> Now your fourth section on your UCAT is gonna be your abstract reasoning. And guys, this is the weird one with all those weird shapes that don't really make sense. I remember first Googling like UCAT or UCAT preparation and just seeing abstract reasoning and thinking like, I didn't really sign up for an IQ test. What's, what's going on? Like, yo, UCAT, can you actually let me know what's going on? Now this section assesses your ability to identify key patterns that links a series of abstract images together. And you'll have 55 questions to answer in 13 minutes. Now, why is this section assessed? Identifying emerging patterns from a set of symptoms in your patient is key to making an effective and efficient diagnosis when you're practicing as a doctor. Now, advice for abstract reasoning, guys. Are you prepared for this? Number one, you need to be consistent with your practice for this section. It's easy to go a few days, a few weeks without practicing some of these questions and completely forget the key skills that you need, whether it be spending two hours doing abstract reasoning a day or even 20 minutes a day, the key is consistency. Make sure you're constantly exposing yourself to the types of questions, types of patterns, so that your brain starts building those neural connections and storing that information in your long-term memory. What I did which really helped me is that I created a bank of patterns. I had like a, a scrap like A4 book and every new pattern that I'd encounter, I'd write that pattern in my book and I'd separate it into categories to organize it. It meant that in my practice, if I saw a new pattern, I'd try and figure it out for myself firstly. If I couldn't, then I'd go to my book to try and work it out. And it just kind of reinforces that revision element of it. One thing that students often find super helpful is to use mnemonics for this. A common one is CPR, C standing for common and color. So what do these images have in common? And obviously, if there's any patterns in the colors, P standing for position, and R standing for rotation and orientation. <laughs> Do you get it? Now, one thing I can say is, again, focus on the type of questions that you get wrong. Using the tools on Medify that allow you to kind of split the types of questions available in abstract reasoning, identify the ones that you're strongest at and the ones that you're weaker at, allow you to use your time efficiently. Honestly, there's no point doing questions that you're already good at. You need to practice on your what you're weaker at and turn them into your strengths. 
Now the final section is the situational judgment test and this is more of a non-academic section directly assessing your aptitude and suitability to working in clinical settings. Although doctors are expected to be excellent scientists at heart with excellent understanding of medical theory, it is also important that you have a good bedside manner with the patient, you have good clinical professionalism and mannerisms and this section assesses that. The key skills that this section is looking out for is empathy, communication, responsibility, adaptability and integrity. A good summary of the qualities that are looked for by the GMC, the General Medical Council, in future doctors can be found in an amazing free document created by the GMC of good medical practice. This is a 37 page long document with 80 bullet points of key skills and concepts that you need to know, which is quite long. However, the good news is that the GMC page actually have kind of like an index feature where you can search and filter out what you're looking for in order to directly go to that page or section. Now in SJT, you'll be given 22 scenarios, 69 questions to be assessed in 26 minutes. In this section, you'll be asked about a series of scenarios um, which range from context in clinical practice to medical school to just everyday life. You'll be asked how appropriate or how important certain actions are. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish whether an action is very important as opposed to just important. So half marks are actually allocated in this section, which is quite reassuring. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have done as well as I did. Uh, by the way, guys, I got a band one in SJT. A key resource for SJT is the GMC Guide to Good Medical Practice. It actually has everything you need to know in there. And again, practice, practice, practice questions. At the start, I was getting band twos, band threes, band fours. It's <laughs> a bit worrying. But as you progressively encounter more and more scenarios, you get used to the answers and the explanations that are given on the Medify page. You realize the sort of behaviors, key characteristics that are looked for when you're practicing. Similarly to abstract reasoning, for situational judgment, I also used like an A4 scrapbook and I wrote down common themes that I saw, like issues to do with confidentiality, issues to do with you being a leader in med school, like leading a project. So I would write down the responses, whether they were appropriate, very appropriate, inappropriate. I found that incredibly helpful because that was kind of a reference that I could go to. And when I was out and I didn't really have the time to pull out my laptop to do a series of questions online, I would just kind of read through my book and my notes and stuff like that. So they are all the sections that you will be tested on in your UCAT. Generally, I think the common theme here is practice makes perfect. And honestly, I'm a testimony to that. When I first started my preparation, I was getting around 620 average. I actually filmed the day that I sat my exam and I created like a really cute vlog. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put it in the information bar, one of these sites, I don't know or in the description bar below. Another key tip is to get familiar with shortcuts, get familiar with the interface, how it looks, get familiar to using features like the scratch pad, which I'll make a video on in the future, and also the on-screen calculator. Get familiar with timing, how many minutes we have per question, get familiar with flagging up questions and coming back to them at the end. Now we've finally reached the end of my video and as promised, guys, I have something special for you guys. Now you've probably noticed that I've been speaking about Medify a lot throughout this video and on my channel solely because it's an incredible resource. I think one in three medical students actually use it to help during their journey. Medify is a paid resource, but honestly, consider it as an investment into your future. However, I am aware that times have been tough because of Miss Rona. So I've paired up with Medify to offer one of you guys one free season pass to the online UCAT Medify course. This will allow you to use all the UCAT features on the website for free. You may ask, Fran, what do I need to do to enter this giveaway? I will be releasing an official post on my Instagram, which is francesca.x, I'll put it on the screen. To enter, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and following my Instagram page. And make sure you tag three of your friends who may be interested in this giveaway in the comment section of my Instagram post. And the winner to this giveaway will be announced on the 9th of July. So that gives you guys plenty of time to get sharing, to get commenting, etc, etc, etc. Woo, woo. 
This has been a long video. This has been a long video. I think I've been filming for like an hour, but it's definitely a worthwhile video. And I really hope it's been of great use to you guys and that you found it helpful. You can is one of those things you just have to do there's no way of avoiding it if you want to get into med school i'm afraid make sure you guys comment like and subscribe honestly i'm seeing you guys who watch my videos but not subscribe make sure you subscribe right now follow my social media platforms and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thank you and goodbye <laughs>